Hello students. In this video we're going to solve a simple harmonic motion problem. So uh, we'll be looking at a frictionless mass spring system. In a couple of previous videos I um, derived this model for a um, simple harmonic motion and then I gave the general solution to it. Um, in this problem I'm going to uh, solve an initial value problem. So um, I wrote the problem down here um, here you have a frictionless spring with a three kilogram mass that's stretched and then uh, with a certain force. Um, so that's the force that's, it's at equilibrium here and that's the force um, to uh, apply to stretch the, the mass down to this point is uh, 20 newtons. And then the spring begins at equilibrium position. That's going to be this position here. But a push um, gives it an initial velocity of 1.5 meters per second. This is a pull, so um, I'll fix this picture in a little bit, um, but it's gonna be pushed upward, and uh, we're gonna find the uh, position of the mass after t seconds. All right, so um, I uh, choose down to be the positive direction, that's in the direction of gravity. Um, if uh, you choose up, if you choose your coordinate system to have up be the positive direction, then um, your solution will differ from mine by a sign, okay? Uh, sign S-I-G-N. All right, so here's our stretch. That's L and um, This is the natural length of the spring So the stretch is 1.8 meters. That's what we're told and so the um, force um, Here you have the weight of the spring and then um, that's that's this arrow down is designates mg That's the weight of the spring and then you have the spring force which wants to restore it um, uh, or uh, wants to pull it up in that direction. Um, but um, when it's at rest, um, this spring force is going to be uh, 20 newtons. And uh, that's a mass of 3 kilograms. Now, the thing you're going to find is that you know mass, you don't know k at this point, so we have to solve for k. That's what I'm getting at here. So we know what L is. L is 1.8. We know that the force to stretch the spring to equilibrium is 20 newtons. So we just plug that into that equation there, and we get that k, the spring constant, is 11.1, .1, which is the same thing as 100 over 9. Uh, I'm going to keep my answers exact, so I'm going to use radicals and uh, fractions in my answers. Um, you could convert everything to decimals if you like, and if you're playing along at home. So we're going to give this thing an initial push. That means this block's actually going to go upward. So for me, that means um, in this uh, coordinate system, uh, the initial velocity is actually going to be uh, negative. Okay, so that's going to be a negative 1.5. So up means that the velocity is x prime of 0 is negative 1.5. It begins at equilibrium. That means that initially the position is 0. This is the 0 position. You can see that in the derivation of the model um, if you refer back to that video. Okay, so I have my initial conditions. Um, starts at equilibrium gives it an initial push of negative 1.5 meters per second um, that's uh, upward and we have a mass of 3 kilograms and the spring constant is 100 over 9. Okay, so that's our model um, for, it's our model of motion. So if I just solve this um, differential equation, so I divide everything by 3, um, 100 over 9 divided by 3 is 100 over 27. Um, I write the characteristic equation. It's R squared because the um, two matches the um, the exponent matches the order. This is R to the zero because this is the zero derivative and not taking a derivative here. So you get this characteristic equation. I subtract 100 over 27 from both sides. I take a square root. If I take a square root of 100 over 27, I get 10. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of 27. Uh, 27 is 9 times 3, so the 9 pops out of the radicals of 3, so I get 3 over 3. Um, I had a negative sign under there, so I had a square root of minus 1. That gives me the i, the plus or minus, because of the ambiguity of the squared. And then I just rationalized the denominator, multiply the top and bottom by square root of 3 over square root of 3. Okay, now, um, now that I have a purely imaginary um, solution to the um, characteristic equation, uh, that means I don't have a real part, so I'm not going to have an exponential. I'll be able to write this, a real exponential part. I'll be able to write the solution totally in terms of sines and cosines. So I'll do that here. I'm using Euler's uh, formula. Um, 
So I don't, I'm not gonna write this answer as e to the i 10 9 square root of three t, e to the minus i uh, 10 9 square root of three. Uh, I'm just going to expand those using Euler's formula and then collect the sine and cosine terms and then redefine my constants. Um, I do that in another video where I verify Euler's formula and I justify writing solutions in this manner. Um, I recommend that you, um, if you haven't seen it before, that you, uh, you know, either read your text, um, this section of your text, or that you um, refer to my other videos on that matter. So now I have to, um, now that I have the solution to the ODE, um, this matches uh, what we expect it to. Um, we expect these cosines and sines with um, the square root of um, this uh, term here, this coefficient of x. Um, so now we just have to apply the initial conditions. So the first one I'll apply is the, um, the condition that says that um, we start at equilibrium. So I plug in zero for t, and uh, cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero, so that just leaves us with c1. Sorry for the mistake here. So I will make that a one. Um, Okay, there we go. Just block that out, make that a one, okay. And now um, that I have that C1 is zero, um, that's gonna leave me with, um, uh, this term is gone, it's just gonna leave, us with the, leave me with the C2 sine of this argument. So now uh, we apply this initial condition, x prime of zero equals minus 1.5. If I plug in zero for cosine, we get a one. Um, I'm gonna write negative 1.5 as negative three halves. And then a little bit of algebra. Um, since cosine of zero is one, we have C2 times 10 ninths square root of three. I solve for C2. And um, um, after we solve for C2 and rationalize the, denom rationalize the square root of three, rationalize the denominator, we get minus 920 square root of three. Um, so that is uh, what C2 is. And so then I plug that into um, what I have remaining here for my general solution, and I get this solution to the initial value problem. So, um, so that means if we take a look at this uh, picture here of the solution, um, you start in the uh, downward um, direction on the graph, but this means that you're pushing it upward, okay? Because negative, remember, negative is up in this case, because um, we want down to be in the direction of gravity. Um, so it oscillates upward, it hits some peak, so this means that it's hitting um, the top of its motion, and then it starts to come back down, passes the equilibrium position, goes all the way down to the bottom, um, the, the block goes all the way down to the bottom, um, re reaches that point, and then the spring pulls it back up, back to equilibrium, and then it goes all the way back up to the top again, the spring pushes it back down, goes to equilibrium, and it just keeps oscillating up and down, up and down as time progresses. This is the time axis, x here is the position axis. So that is um, how you solve this um, initial value problem. If um, you chose up to be the positive direction for your coordinate system, then this solution would be positive, and this graph would be flipped it would be flipped upward, so you would start up in this direction and then come down to equilibrium. All right, good luck.